Good evening. First off, I'd like to thank everybody for watching my YouTube channel. I'm kind of new to this, uh, but I've got several videos I'm going to be making over the coming days, weeks, and months. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the dilemma with Freon and how that affects the homeowner with their heating and air conditioning system. First off, Freon, or what we would call in the air conditioning business R22, which is a refrigerant, was one of the one of the most widely used, really the only used for a long time refrigerant in residential uh, air conditioning in recent history. However, in the last 10 years or so, because of changes with the EPA, they determined that uh, R22 was uh, contributing to the depletion of the ozone uh, because of the, it contained some chlorine material and so the EPA started phasing it out some time back. Most people, that's gone largely unnoticed for most folks until the recent time as we get down to the final mile, so to speak, here where we're actually going to not be able to get R22 anymore. Um, I can tell you right now from an HVAC professional perspective that I pay today for R22 three times what I paid for it two years ago. Um, we can no longer get equipment uh, that is used on R22 systems. So if you need to have a condenser replaced, we can't get an R22 condenser anymore. Uh, we can't even get what we call a dry ship condenser anymore, which was a condenser shipped out that could be used on R22, but was pre-charged with nitrogen instead of refrigerant. So that's a big wake up for homeowners. When you have AC failures, depending on what it is, if it's catastrophic, uh, you may be in a position now where you wake up one morning and your air conditioner is blowing hot air and you have a tech come out and find out that your only real solution is to completely change the system out on your home. And that is a big shocker, right? No homeowner, me or anybody else that I know, wakes up in the morning looking to spend five, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000 on a new air conditioning system unexpectedly. Uh, people look to buy boats, take trips, send their kids to college, maybe buy a new car, but they typically don't wake up in the morning looking to uh, buy a new AC system. So that is one of the issues that is largely unknown by homeowners that the changes that the EPA made are going to have a huge impact on the residential HVAC uh, market. Because of that, where there's a a gap, somebody will fill a need. Um, several companies have made uh, what you will hear referred to as replacements or drop-ins. Uh, these are refrigerants such as 407C, 422D, MO99, and that name drop-in is a little bit deceiving, right, because that insinuates that perhaps me as a technician can come out and uh, find a system that's low on charge and I can just drop in some 407C on top of that and get the homeowner charged back up and get them cooling again. And nothing could be farther from the truth. I'm no expert, I'm no chemist, but I can tell you that when you take one refrigerant and you mix it with another refrigerant inside of an air conditioning system, you get a third refrigerant of which we do not know the properties. And I'm ashamed to say, unfortunately, that I have discovered recently and it's becoming more and more prevalent that there are folks out there who are taking drop-in or replacement refrigerants and adding them to existing R22 and systems. I have gone on some of those calls where you're scratching your head because the system's running but it's not cooling and the pressure's all, all, all over the map and you start doing some investigation, talking with the homeowner, figure out somebody else has been out there, they put some refrigerant in, maybe it was in an orange jug instead of a light blue, anyway. Um, a couple of times now, I have been able to deduce from speaking with a homeowner that uh, somebody had added refrigerant to their system that was not R22. Now, all that being said, nothing wrong with replacements or drop-ins, some of them in my opinion. Uh, there are certainly HVAC folks out there who have chosen not to use replacements or drop-ins. There are folks that uh, have embraced it. I would consider myself somewhere in the middle. I've seen John Israel here, well-known guy, HVAC guy here on YouTube. Uh, I believe he's using 407C. I've seen him do some uh, retrofits and some changeouts. I myself have converted several systems over to 407C. I even, uh, in recent months, towards the end of last summer, uh, laid my hands on a couple of 407C condensers 
that I installed in place of R22 condensers when there was a compressor failure um, that have been running fine. But there is a procedure for that which does not include adding any type of those refrigerants to existing R22 in the system. So um, first off to go down a rabbit trail here if you're having to put refrigerant in your AC system every year you have a leak. HVAC systems are sealed um, if I put 10 pounds of refrigerant in your system today, two years from now, there should still be 10 pounds of refrigerant in there. If there's not, you have a leak. The best thing to do is repair the leak, but I get it, right? Some people don't have the money. They don't have the inclination. I'm not here to judge. Um, sometimes I, I, I've, got, I've got customers that have added refrigerant to their system every year for two or three years. It gets them through the summer, you know, and they know full well that one of these days, that leak's going to get big enough that we're not going to be able to put any in there anymore. It's not going to last the summer. But the bigger problem is with the R22 phase out is it's getting to be uh, cost prohibitive to do that. In my area right now, R22 is selling for between $75 and $100 per pound. Um, so I had a gentleman the other day that was whacking vines off the side of his house with some type of electric weed whacker, hit his uh, liquid line on his air conditioning system with the whacker and let uh, about 16 pounds of R22 go on a big five ton system into the free air. Um, so you can see by the time we do the repair, make the vacuum, do the vacuum, flush the system, recharge it, pretty soon he's into $2,2500 repair for this accident and, and it's a, a 12 year old R22 system at some point it just doesn't, it becomes cost prohibitive to throw that kind of money at a 10 or 12 year old system. So it does put us all in a difficult situation. Obviously for the HVAC industry it's good because in the coming years we're going to sell a lot of new air conditioning systems to get people converted over to the new 410A. The biggest problem with that is and why that is the case, 410A just to make it simple, runs at about twice the pressures that R22 runs at. So most all the equipment that was built spec to R22 were not pressure rated for the up to 400 PSI that could be in a 410A system. So it requires a complete system change up. They also use different oils for lubricant in the compressor and lines, which just causes a little bit of a problem, but I think there's been some research done and we've been able to overcome some of that. So here's what I would say. Homeowner, get ready. Pay attention, do your research, and don't be surprised when you're having to fork out big dollars to have refrigerant put in your system. Um, make sure that you're getting the right refrigerant put in your system. If the, if the HVAC tech says, hey, you know, you're low, I've got this other refrigerant over here I can put in a little bit cheaper, your response should be no. Unless they're offering to do a complete conversion, then that's a different conversation. Um, HVAC guys, come on, right? Don't be putting, uh, ref mixing refrigerants in people's HVAC systems. I, I, it's unethical. It's unprofessional. Uh, I mean, learn your trade craft. Do some research. I realize some of you probably work for companies where you've got a service manager or an owner that's telling you just go out and do this. To be perfectly honest, I know nobody wants to talk about this, but I've seen it happen more times than, than any whenever a customer had a home warranty and home warranty had sent a company out there to do repairs and they ended up putting refrigerant in the system because home warranty repairs are typically done in the cheapest manner absolutely possible which is a whole nother video that I may do somewhere down the line. But in the meantime I just wanted to get it and kind of bring everybody up to speed on my opinion this is strictly my opinion uh, based on my experience my training on uh, on what I how I think the world should work according to HVAC. So there's obviously lots of people out there that have lots of other opinions. But thanks for listening. And hey, everybody have a great day. If you got any questions, you want to leave me some comments, you want to send me an email, do the best I can to answer. Otherwise, have a terrific night.